Math 31, welcome to example eight. So this is the last example in this section and we're back to a stats problem. So awesome, stats is the best. Well, let's read this, see what we have going on. It says the table shows the number of transactions in millions by users of bank debit credit cards. So if I just take a look at my table, um, I've got years here, so I can see I've got time, so I've got some kind of independent variable. I'm probably gonna use a base year because I don't want to deal with the number 1990 and 2011, those are large numbers. And it looks like over here I have transactions, and this is transactions of bank debit cards. And you can see back in the 90s, we weren't as into bank debit credit cards, they were a new thing. We were still writing checks and paying, things, uh, paying for things with cash. I'm not sure how many of you have written a check in your lifetime. I, I barely write any anymore. And you can just see the huge uptick in the number of bank debit card transactions, right? You can see in 2011, we were actually at 39 billion, all right? That's what 39, 49, this is 39,000 millions, all right? So it just, it snowballed. Everyone is using these bank debit credit, or excuse me, bank debit cards. And we're still using them today, although now we're, I, I just learned about Venmo this year. I'm feeling very hip. All right, so with all that being said, Let's take a look at what is being asked of us. It says using x equaling zero to represent 1990. All right, so there's my base year. I would have picked my base year to be 1990, but I also directed it as 1990. x equaling three to represent 1993 and so on. Use the regression feature on your calculator to determine the quadratic function that best fits the data and plot the data on the graph. All right, so this wants me to get a quadratic function. Okay, I can do that. So let me go over to my calculator and let's go ahead and get this data into our list. That's the first thing I always wanna do. So if I hit stat and enter, it looks like I have some old data in here. So I'm gonna go back to my home screen and clear out my lists. All right, and then let's go punch this in. All right, now I, I wanna be careful. 1990 was year zero. So I usually write my base year conversions here. This would be year zero, year two, five, eight, 10, 14, 18, and this would be 21. And again, if you're ever unsure, you can always take your current year and subtract out your base year and find out what your, your time value would be, your X value, your independent or your input value. All right, let's go get these in my lists. I'm gonna do a quick check, make sure I don't have a typo. Um, one other thing I always wanna check is to make sure I have the same number of data values in L1 as L2. They have to match up. If they don't, I would get an error. Okay, I'm in 27. All right, I'm not seeing a typo here, so that's great. Now it asked me to make a quadratic model, right? It says quadratic function. I just want to get a look at the scatter plot before I do that. So I'm going to hit second and y equals. And again, I have my plot off because I've been doing a bunch of math problems. Let me turn it back on and hit zoom nine and see if this looks. Oh, I can kind of see the parabola hanging out there. I also noticed my, my calculator was still going. Do you see this thing, this line that popped in? It means I probably didn't clear out something from a previous math problem. So I didn't clear out that cubic we were dealing with in example seven. Let me clear that out and hit zoom nine. And that does look like it could be the right half of a parabola. And it, it also could be the right half of a different type of function. Maybe this is exponential, maybe it's cubic, maybe it's quartic. But I do see the parabola, the curve in the graph. It doesn't really look like a line. It's not too far off from a line, but a curve would be better. Okay, so if we wanna run quadratic regression, we've done this before. Let me clear that out. We're gonna go stat, calc, and if you remember quadratic regression is down here at five. So I'm gonna do L1 comma L2 comma Y1. And there's that quadratic model. And I, I've mentioned many times, I, I go three decimals. So I'm gonna move this over to the side so you can see the numbers. 
and then I'm going to write this up. So this would be f of x would be equal, okay, my a is 117.864 x squared minus 630.301 x and then plus 622.798. Give me a moment. I gotta move this down just so I can write the seven nine eight. All right. So I'm I'm getting my quadratic model from my calculator now. I want us to take note of this r squared number. It's going to come into play a little bit later. Back when we were doing linear regression, we kept track of that r value. Anytime you move past linear regression, meaning you're putting a linear model onto your data. But now we're not, we're, we've moved on, right? We're into quadratics. We, we measure or we take note of the R squared number. It's going to help us determine which model is best because we're actually gonna make a few models as we go through this problem. And the larger, or I should say, the closer this number is to one, the better fit that model is. So let me go ahead and now hit zoom nine. I should be able to see my parabola coming through. So that's doing pretty good, right? Looks like it's hitting those points a lot better than a line would. And just if you wanted to see the line, if I did stat calc 8, L1, L2, I'll put this one into Y2 just so we can compare. And I'm not asking you to do this, I just want you to see. Do you see the R squared is only 0.87? It's much lower than 0.998. If I hit zoom nine or graph, give me a moment, the parabola's gotta come through and we'll see the line in just a bit. Do you see how the line just doesn't fit as well? <coughs> Excuse me. Right, it misses a lot of the points. And, and that R squared is helping us recognize that. R is 0.93 here, but R squared is only 87, right? And this was practically 100, right? Or one, I should say. Um, sometimes we view R squared as a percent. So this is 87%, this was almost 100%. All right, so let me clear out that line. I don't want that in there because that was not a good fitting model. All right, but we've got the quadratic model. All right, so I'm gonna scooch this up just a bit so we can get the next examples in view. So I want us to take a look at parts B and C. So I want to repeat the same process I did in A, but now I want to do a cubic function, meaning a degree three polynomial. And then I even want to try a quartic function, a degree four polynomial. And these are going to become very long to write out. So I'm going to write the cubic one like on this part of the paper and the quartic one down here. And I'm still going to keep track of their R squared numbers. So let's go see what the cubic model would be. And I'm gonna put the cubic model into Y2, and then I'll drop the quartic model into Y3, just so I have all of the models at once. It's gonna get pretty crowded. So here we go. All right, stat, calc. Now for cubic, you need option six. I'm gonna go L1 against L2, but I'm gonna drop it into Y2. If you keep this as Y1, let's say you, you didn't alter this to Y2, what would happen, and I'm gonna hit enter, what would happen is your calculator would take this cubic function and overwrite what was in Y1. You would lose the parabola here. So that's why I dropped it into Y2. I just dropped it into a different one. So here's the parabola, the quadratic model. Here's the cubic model. And every time you go up a power, you gain a coefficient, right? Because now it's AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. So you've got four numbers, four coefficients you're keeping track of plus that R squared value. All right, so give me a moment. I'm gonna write this out. I'm gonna go three decimals, but it's gonna take me a little while. So f of x would equal, okay, 0.747 x cubed. All right, plus we have 94.641. Okay, and then we have minus 453.482 x. and I'm running out of space, so here we go, plus 428.822, and let me put this down here. So plus 428.822, and let me keep track that for this one, R squared was again 0.998. Okay, so this was the cubic model. All right, and let's go find the quartic model. All right, and, and just so far, in terms of 
the cubic versus quadratic model. So my cubic models R squared was 0.998. And if you remember the quadratic model, if I just go back and do the quadratic, it was also 0.998. So to determine which one was better, you really, you have to even go further. It looks like this was a, then 796. What was it for the cubic? It was point, ooh, 0.938. So, so far the cubic is just slightly better but it's very slight. I mean, we're going to the fourth, fifth, and sixth decimal, decimal point, decimal place to figure that out. All right, let's go do cortic. So stat calc, all right, you see option seven there is cortic. All right, so let's go L1 against L2 again. I wanna drop this into Y3, so that way I'm keeping all three of my models and my Y equals. All right, whoo, and you can even see the down arrow key here because you're gonna have so many letters. Right? Whenever there's a little down arrow key, if you hit the down arrow button, there's your R squared. So there's so much that you can actually scroll. Okay, so I'm gonna start to try and write this out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to move my calculator in just a bit. So here we go, for the quartic model, we'll have f of x would be equal to, all right, negative 0.389 x to the fourth and then we're gonna have 17.132 x cubed. All right, minus 120.109. All right, it looks like my next one was 438.222 plus 438.222 x I went to x, x fourths cubed squared x. Okay, and my constant is then negative 42.084. All right, and then let me see my r, ooh, my r squared was 0.999. All right, so this was the quartic model. And you can see it's a lot to write these out. And this is what stats folks do. I mean, we sit there and we, we take some data and we keep running different models against it. We'll start with a quadratic, we'll do a cubic, a quartic, then we'll even branch into exponential and logarithmic and logistic, all sorts of things. But we do have metrics to help us determine which model is best. And I had mentioned R squared up top here. Let me scooch this down just a bit. Right? When we did the quadratic model, our R squared was 0.998. Right? When we did the cubic model, our R squared was 0.999. And when we did the, excuse me, was 0.99, I think this was 998, I think. Oh, no, no, here it is, sorry, I'm messing my own stuff up. Here's the cubic model, 0.998. And here was the quartic, 0.999. So you're seeing that the largest R squared was happening on that quartic model. And the closer R squared is to one, the better fit your model. And that's one of our main metrics to determine which model is best. And if you go major in stats, we have a lot of other metrics. We have residual plots and standard, or in, and, and residual lengths and all, all sorts of stuff that we can look at. But for, for now, if we look at R squared, we call that the coefficient of determination. It's a measure of the strength of the relationship between the two variables. Or another way of saying that is how well does a regression model fit the data? The closer R, the value of R squared is to one, the better the fit. So when we compare the R squared models for these three functions found in parts A through C, which function or which model fit best? The quartic model. All right, so then what I would do, if I drop that quartic model, it looks like I dropped it into Y3. So I could go over here and I can turn Y1 off. If I hover over the equal sign, I hit the left arrow key and just hit enter. You can see that that equal sign no longer has a black background. So I turned the quadratic model off. Now I'm gonna turn the cubic off, same way. Right? If I was here down on Y2, if I hit the left arrow key and hit enter, that equal sign no longer has the black background, I turned it off. And the only one that I've left on is this beast of a quartic model. I mean, look at that thing. All right, but now if I hit zoom nine, the only thing that's gonna show up is that quartic model. And you can see it's doing a pretty good job of hitting those points uh, 
really well, right? It's really gotten very good at modeling that data as me taking those that scatter plot, those ordered pairs, and slapping a math function onto it. All right, so with that, that ends our time in section 5.3. So just to remind you where we've been in this section, right? We've talked about using factoring to find zeros of polynomials. We did a couple of examples um, where we factored by grouping, or I should say we did one example where we factored by grouping. We did a, a few where we did, where we factored out the GCF. In example one, we reviewed up U substitutions. Um, we talked about zeros and their multiplicities, how even multiplicities touch an x-axis, but odd multiplicities cross an x-axis. We graphed some functions, taking a look at those traits that are outlined in that comparison table I gave you. So at this point, if I gave you a polynomial, you should be able to tell me its domain, its y-intercept, its x-intercept, its end behavior. You should be able to graph it, and then from the graph, tell me the range. So we should be pretty fluent in this first column here, all right? So we should have the ability to graph polynomial functions after we get through this section. And then the last thing we did, well, second to last thing, we talked about the intermediate value theorem. And then we did some polynomial regression. All right, so with that, we're going to head on into section 5.4, where we're going to start to look at dividing polynomials. And the reason we're going to start to look at dividing polynomials is because the next major family of functions that we're going to discuss are rational functions. And that's where we have division of polynomials. And these are one of the trickier functions, or families of functions to graph. This is going to take a long time to unpack. And there's a lot of variability in how these graphs play out. Polynomials are much more straightforward. Rational functions are not. All right, so with that, I'll see you in 5.4. Thanks, gang. Bye. Hey, Math 31, before we officially get out of here, I just want to go ahead, take a moment, and show you how you could have run all of these regressions on your calculator. But I want you to be able to see it um, with the little clicks happening from my computer screen. I know I did it by hand just a moment ago, but in case you need a review of how, of what buttons to hit precisely, here we go. So if I hit stat and enter, I've got some data in here. Now I can clear out these lists individually by hitting clear and enter. Or what I tend to do, especially when I'm starting a new problem, is I go to my home screen with second in mode and I hit second in the plus sign. Option four will just clear them all out at once. Okay, so give me a moment. I need to get my data into my list. Don't forget, I have a base here. So we'll go 0, 2, 10, 14, 18, and then I think it was 21. All right, let me get my y values in. So 27. And then 39049. And again, I, I just make sure that you have the same number of observations in L1 as L, and L2. I want to show you what would happen if you um, didn't. Let me just delete this right now. And I want you to see that right now I have um, seven values in L1 and eight values in L2. And I want you to see when I go to make a scatter plot how I'm going to get an error. So when I go to turn this plot on, Right? and I hit zoom nine, my calculator is gonna actually straight up tell me, hey, your dimensions do not match. You've got to fix something. So when you get a dimension error, whether it says invalid dim or dimension mismatch, something's going on with your lists. So let me go back in here and I'm like, well, everything looks okay. Oh, but there's the problem. I'm missing a data value here. So let me put 21 back in. All right, I'm gonna clear all this out. And here we go. Whenever you want to make a stat plot, right? Two buttons, second, y equals. I have mine on. I, I just did that intentionally so I could show you that dimension mismatch error. If you want to fix it, hit enter. And you can toggle between on and off by just hovering over one and hitting enter. So now my plot is off. I'm going to turn it back on. And once it's ready to go, let's hit zoom nine. All right, and when I take a look at that, 
Ooh, I've got some function going through there. What did we graph? Oh, um, I had just come off of doing um, example three on my calculator. Let me clear this out and now I'll hit zoom nine. Okay, now I have just the scatter plot and it does look like a parabola or at least some kind of curve. So let me go run quadratic regression because that was what we were directed to do in part A. So I'm gonna do stat calc quad is five. Let's go, let's go L1 against L2 and drop it into Y1. Y1 we start with vars. Go to the right, enter, enter, enter. And there's my quadratic regression. And if you're not seeing your R squared, that means somehow your diagnostics have been turned off. And if you need to turn them back on, you go second and catalog, right? We did this once way back in the day. I go down to where it says diagnostics on, and it's alphabetical, so you'd have to click quite a few times, but where it says diagnostics on and hit enter twice. All right, so there, whoops, I erased it. Let me do this again. There's our quadratic. If I want to go cubic, I'm going to hit stat calc. Well, this time I'm going to go six, and then I'm going to do L1, L2, and so that I don't lose that quadratic model I found in part A, let me drop this cubic model into a different regression equation. I'll also put it into Y2. And I'll hit enter, and there's that beast, right? Those are really, really large. Well, they're large numbers, but there's a lot of them. All right, and you can now see in my Y equals, I've got my parabola, I've got my cubic, all right? And that cubic, it's just a beast to write out. I mean, look at that thing. All right, and then part C asks you to find a cortic. So we'll do stat, calc, cortic is option seven. We'll go L1, L2. I already have equations in Y1 and Y2, so I'll drop this one into Y3. Hit enter. And again, I'm gonna take note that there's this little down arrow key, which means I can scroll down. There's my R squared value. And this is the higher of the three, or the highest of the three. This is the best fitting model. All right, and I've dropped it into Y3. Let me go over the equal sign and there you can see it. All right, look at that thing. And that's the best fitting one. So I'm actually gonna go turn Y2 off by hovering over it, hovering over the equal sign and hitting enter. And then let me go turn the parabola off. And now let's see what this thing looks like. There is my scatter plot overlaid with a cortic regression model. All right, so with that, we're gonna head on into the next section. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.